Maybe from inside of beads. Or do it all beads. All the Or do all beads. It's taken forever to beat six of them. Well, the other ones don't have beads. No, that she just has a tree. She just has the tree. She she has a tree. I have all six of the ones down there. I mean, okay. Maybe I could pay you the beads. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen them finish with all beads, and I mean, it's beautiful. It's, it's stunning. It really is. is. Oh. Right. Well, you're going to teach me beading on this, right? Yes. Good morning, everybody. How is everybody this morning? We're good. You're good. Okay. okay. So, um, that's kind of gonna drive me crazy. Okay. Would you rather face you? So this morning, we're gonna go over the tree and the ornaments. And next week, we'll go over the presents. Um, so the tree and the ornaments are kind of simple, but well, maybe for some, but we'll walk you through it. And then we will, um, because I know some people are still working on the coat and the fur, and there are some things that have to be done prior to us doing the beading, the ribbon, and the sack. So, um, and I know a lot of us are waiting still for the very velvet. Some of us are waiting for thread works for this coat. That would be me. Um, and so on. So, on the tree, can you see it? We did long and shorts, and we did it in three colors. So, the colors we used were two splendor and one essential, all in greens. We did land, random long and shorts, and you want to pull it over to right where his fur is and down. Okay, so it's just random long and shorts, any colors you want, as you can go as vivid with the brighter green as you want, or you can um, tone it down, it's totally up to you. And we'll give you two different, um, we both did ours in long and shorts and mine tend to be a little bit longer. Where is it? I can't see it. Can you see that? Maybe we just have to take this out. Not super well. Could you email, when you email? I will definitely email pictures of both of them because, and I'll email along with the stitch guide today. And then you'll get also um, the, you'll be able to get it on um, the Facebook page as well. But I'll Perfect. pass them over to you too. And then you'll have close ups. So those are just random long and shorts. Would you hold on to this? I can turn this computer. Did you do one first, or did you do the tree and then do your? Tree. We did our tree first. You might find it easier to do your ornaments first. Okay. So you might find it easier to do your ornaments first, depending on how, because that way you maybe you're lifting some of the tree over the ornaments. Um, it really depends on how, what's easiest for you in regards to how you work. Usually the last thing you put on the canvas is what sticks on top. So if you do the tree first, your ornaments would then stick on top yeah. of the tree branches. And if not, then your tree, then, um, some of your branches are going to go over your ornaments. So it really depends on what you want to do. Four, five, four, five, or six. Um, and that's four ply on the slender, and then the essentials is singular. Okay. 
Then the other thing that we worked on was the ornaments. So, and we used a combination of different stitches. However, they're so small that you may decide that all you wanna do is basket weave and then add some beading, or you might wanna just do some brick. So in the stitch guide, you have, um, if you wanna go through this, Andrea, what the first one is. The first one is mostly just some tint. Then the, the bottom red part is in a sort of a, a rose variation. And there's, a, when you get your email, it will have the stitch guide. It'll have a diagram on there for the rose variation for that one. And it's, that's the rose variation you'll do in that middle, middle section there. If you choose to, if you, yeah. But then the rest of it is, is basically just tent. A lot of these were very small areas. You're also welcome to put beads wherever you want. You can bead all the ornaments, some, none. Um, yeah, you can go either way with that. Then number, ornament number two, which is to the right of the one on top. And it is done with a uh, sort of a modified fan stitch and that is that stitch that you're getting to do the top and the bottom of that in red and then the middle part is with the green and we're not telling you which threads to use here just you've got reds and greens and shinies and sparklies just use your imagination and use you know kind of vary them up how you want them you may want all of them the same shade of red, all of them, you know, different shades of green. And then white as well. And then, yes. Then ornament number three, which goes to the left, on the far left, it was just all uh, tent basket weave. For all of these, for the hanger that hangs them on the tree, that will be done with your sparkly silver or gold. You got a sparkly, usually I think a cry neck in there. Um, for the hangers, and those are just French knots. You can do, I varied between some of them, I did one French knot, some of them I did two French knots. So you can vary that up. Then ornament number four, which comes to the right near the, the bottom of his beard, that is done with an alternating mosaic and a tent. This one also, I applied beads across the area that have the white to it. There were white, there are white dots in the middle red part. And so I added some beads to that. You can either bead that or French knot it, or just do a tent stitch. Then ornament five, which is to the far left. And that one is tent on top with some herringbone in the middle. And it's a herringbone over two. And that was just white and white and red. Then ornament six coming to the center. Oh, that's the reverse tent, reverse basket weave or reverse tent stitch all through it with the um the stripe in the middle. I actually used the green sequin with a B. When you're attaching a sequin with a B, you come up through the canvas, you come up through the middle of the sequin, you come up through the middle of the B. Then when you come back down, you're gonna come around the B and go through the sequin and go through the canvas and then do a stitch on the back to kind of help hold it in place. Um, and that's how the B holds the sequin in place. Then the ornament on the far right, number seven, that is done with slanted goblin over two and some basket weave. And the slanted goblins go in, they change direction from one row to another. And there I actually use French knots instead of beads on that one. Do I use beads? Do I use French, French knots. knots? French knots on that one. Then the one on the far left, I tried to crisscross Hungarian and I did not like it. Um, it was just too much for that small space. 
you know, probably in hindsight, I probably would have made that tree more green than red so that it stood out from the coat. Just, you may want to change that up some. Um, and I did that in brick. I did a horizontal brick for the green in the middle, and I did a vertical brick for the red part. And again, I did some French knots for the whites um, for that one. Then the, the ornaments on the back, there are three of them. The one on the top is done just like the one on, no, the one on the back is done. Oh, the Rhodes variation. So it is done, no, no, right here. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Oh, here we go. Ornament one on the back is same as ornament four on the front. That's all right. We'll catch up. It's the alternating <laughs> mosaic. It's the alternating mosaic in the tent. The one on top. Yes. Yes. The one. So the one that's on top on the back is just like the one that's closest to the beard on the front. Okay. Then number two on the back is the far right one at the bottom. And it is the same as the ornament number five from the front, which is on his sleeve. The far left, the red and white one that has the herring bone in it. And then the third one on this one is over by his hair and it's hard to see. So you can either stitch that, there's really not a whole lot to stitch, or you could really just make that tree. Just do some long and short stitches over it and just make that tree branches. Any questions? Esther, how are you doing? Waiting for the threads to come. They should be there. To, they should be, I'm surprised you don't have them. So you should have them by today because they went out on Saturday. Like we Post just, office app says today. Yeah. So, Beth, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing, I'm way behind because I've been in California for the last two weeks. That's okay. Don't worry about it because we're going to give you plenty of time to catch up before we get to um, the stuff that's super important that we just, that's going to take a long time for everybody to do. And Jessica? Yeah. Um, I'm good. I'm working on her. <laughs> Okay, so if there's no questions on this, you can get started on this after you've finished everything else or in between, doesn't matter. And then we will come back next week and we will go over the presents. And then after that point, we're just gonna allow you some time to catch up before we get to the bigger things. And Beth, if you need any more threads, give, um, just text me or email me. Okay. All right. We're going to give some time for everybody to get caught up before we hit into the bows, the beading, the um, ribbon work and the wreath, and then of course attaching the pouch. So we're going to try to get everybody on the same page before we start into that, or at least close before we start into those parts work. Um, and we're going to baby step it, so don't panic. Don't panic. We'll take you step by step. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Okay. All right. Sounds like we're good. Thank you, ladies. We'll see you next week or tomorrow or whatever. Bye. Bye.